In this video we're going to look at adding and subtracting radical expressions. So when we talk about radical expressions we're talking about um, something with a, a root in it. It could be a square root or a cubed root or a fourth root. Most of the problems you're going to see are square roots or cubed roots. So let's start off with the pretty straightforward problem. Let's say we have 3 square root 2 plus 6 square root 2. Well, what would be your guess as to what the answer to this would be? 3 square roots of 2 plus 6 square roots of 2. It seems logical that the answer would be 9 square roots of 2. Now, some of you may have wanted to do something with these 2s under the square roots, but let's talk about why you would not do that. First of all, let's look at something you already know. Let's say you have a problem 3x plus 6x. What's 3x's plus 6x's? Well, most of you already know that's going to be 9x. If you look at this problem with the radicals, all you've got is a square root of 2 in place of the x. You see that? If I have a square root of 2 right here where this x is, put it where all the x's are, I have a little justification for my answer over here. 3x's plus 6x's is 9x's. 3 square roots of 2 plus 6 square roots of 2 is 9 square roots of 2. So you can almost think of this square root of 2 as a value of x, and you're simply combining like terms. So with that in mind, if you had 3 square roots of 2 plus 6 square roots of 5, that's kind of like trying to add 3x and 6y because square root of 2 is representing your x and square root of 5 is representing your y and they're not like terms. I can't add a certain number of square roots of 2 to a certain number of square roots of 5. That would be a, that would be my simplified expression because those two terms are, are not like terms, just like x and y. So I think that's a really good way to think about adding um, and subtracting radical expressions is think of them as like terms and then you can use your previous knowledge and, and be successful. Um, from an algebraic standpoint, the reason this works has to do with the distributive property. So let's say, let's do this problem one more time. 3 square root 2 plus 6 square root 2. Actually, let me do a slightly different one. 3 square root 2 plus uh, 4 square root 2. So based on what we talked about up here, the answer we know is 7 square root 2. So algebraically, like I said, the distributive property says a times the quantity b plus c equals a times b plus a times c, multiplying into the parentheses or factoring out this a out in front, and then you have b plus c. So when you have a common factor and you factor that out, that's basically doing the distributive property, what we would think of the reverse of the distributive property, but either way is the distributive property. So what do these two terms have in common? Do they have a common factor? They do. They have a square root of 2 in common. So if I factor out that square root of 2, what do I have left? I have 3 plus, if I take the square root of 2 out of the second term, I have 4. Well, what's 3 plus 4? 3 plus 4 is 7. So I have 7 square root of 2 times 7, which is the same as 7 times the square root of 2, and that would be by the commutative property. Now, depending on your instructor, you may not have to memorize the names of these properties, but I think it's it's good to know what's going on because then you you will make legal moves. You're less likely to make illegal moves and, and kind of silly silly mistakes. There, there's a reason or a property behind everything that we do and when you know those properties it helps you to be more confident about the decisions you're making and um, what what you can do and what you can't do within within a problem. If there's a if there's a property that justifies it then you know you can do it. You can be confident about it. Alright so there we go. That's the basics. Let's look at some some problems. I mean, it's pretty straightforward once you get the idea of like terms and you're just using the distributive property. So let's say we have um, 8 square root 3 minus 4 square root 7 plus 10 square root 7 minus square root 3. If you want to give that a shot, maybe pause the video and start it when you're ready. All right, so we have four terms here. 8 square root 3 is a term. Negative 4, or minus 4 square root 7 is a term. 
10 square root 7, and then minus 3. So what do we have for like terms? The square root of 3, 8 square root 3, and minus square root 3. Just think of those square root 3's like x's. Those are like terms. And then we have our square root 7 terms. Those could be like y terms. So if we combine, we have 8 square roots of 3 take away a square root of 3. Remember, if there's no number here, it's 1 square root of 3, because 1 times the square root of 3 is just square root of 3. 8 square root of 3 take away 1 square root of 3 leaves 7 square roots of 3. And then we have negative 4 square roots of 7 plus 10 square root of 7. So negative 4 plus 10 is positive 6, and that's how many root 7s we'd have. This root 3 is acting like the x we talked about earlier, and this 7 is acting like a different variable, like a y, and so therefore we cannot combine those together, and that would be our final answer. All right, what if we have something like, oh, let's say we have um, 6 square root 18 plus... 10 square root 2. So you might look at that and say, well, those are not like terms, so I guess I'm done. Box it and go on to the next problem. Well, that's not true in this problem because we have a square root of 18 under here which can be simplified. Remember, the way you simplify those is you look for a perfect square factor and you're going to use the rule the square root of a times b equals the square root of a times the square root of b and you're going to try to find out if uh, one of these a or b numbers could be a perfect square so that when you split it apart you can take the square root of it. So what's a perfect square that goes into 18? Perfect squares are 1, which isn't really going to help us, 4, 9, 16, 25, etc. Well, 18, 9, that looks good. 9? Alright, so 18 is 9 times 2. Then I'll just bring down this 10 square root 2. So now I could take the square root of 9, I could use this rule and break it up, I'll go ahead and write that out. So I could break this up, square root 9 times square root 2 plus 10 square root 2. The square root of 9 is 3, so now I have 6 times 3 times square root 2. 6 times 3 is 18, so I have 18 square root 2 plus 10 square root 2. You're going to see this a lot when you're doing these kind of problems out of a book. They don't look like you're going to be able to combine like terms, but after you break down what's underneath the radical and simplify it, then you do have like terms. So 18 square root 2 plus 10 square root 2 is going to give us 28 square root 2. So that would be your answer. All right, let's try. Have you try one of those? And let's do um, let's do six. I'm kind of stuck on six. Let's do a different number. How about uh, five square root seventy-five plus uh, square root twelve? So go ahead and pause the video and give that a try. Now you're going to have to look at both of those. Okay, so let's see how you did. Get some room here. Like I said, both of these numbers, 75 and 12, have factors that are perfect squares. A perfect square that goes into 75 is 25, so I'm going to break that down to 25 times 3. And a perfect square that goes into 12 would be 4, so I'm going to break that down to 4 times 3. So here's your perfect squares, 25 and 4. I'm going to skip a step now, and I'm just going to take the square root of 25. So when I take the square root of 25 and that comes out, it becomes a 5 because the square root of 25 is 5. And then I'm going to have to times it by this blue 5 that's already out here. The square root of 4, I'm going to take the square root of 4, so that's going to come out and be a 2. Okay, so that's going to be gone. I'm going to have a 2 outside. That's going to be gone and become a 5 outside. What do I have now? I have 5 times 5, which is 25, and then I have inside the radical a 3. So now I've got 
Yeah, I should have turned off my cell phone, huh? Now I've got uh, 2 over here and the square root of 3 there. Okay, so I've got 25 square roots of 3 plus 2 square roots of 3. That gives me 27 square root 3. So you always want to look in and see if you can simplify what's underneath the radical sign. And then combine like terms if you can at the end. Now let's look at a cubic root just to do an example of, of one of those. Let's say we've got 15 cubed root 81 minus 4 cubed root of 24. It's going to work the same way. Um, these are not like terms. Cubed root of 81 and cubed root of 24, they're different, so I can't combine them. But I have to think about if I can break them down. Now I've got uh, cubed roots, so I need to think about what the perfect cubes are. Cubed numbers. So 2 cubed is 8. So 8's a perfect cube. 3 cubed is 27. 27 is a perfect cube. And 4 cubed is 64, so that's a perfect cube, etc. We want to know, do any of these numbers, 8, 27, or 64, go into 81 or 24? That's what we're looking for. We don't have to go past 64 because our numbers aren't that big. All right, so what goes into 81? Does 8 go into 81? No. Does 27 go into 81? Well, you could check it out, but it does. It goes in three times. So I'm going to split this up to 27 times 3. Okay, what's a perfect cube that goes into 24? Our first one is 8. Does 8 go into 24? Bingo. So we'll break that down to 8 times 3. Now I could take these perfect cubes out. I could take the cubed root of 27. Well, let me put it in front. I have a little more room. It doesn't really matter where, where you put it as far as the 15 goes. So that's going to come out and it's going to become a 3 because the cubed root of 27 is 3. 3 times 3 times 3 is 27, so that's not going to be there anymore. The cubed root of 8 is going to be a 2. So I'm going to multiply that by that 4 and that 8 is going to be gone from underneath there. Alright, what do we have? 3 times 15 is 45 on the outside now. And on the inside we have left a uh, cubed root of 3. What do we have here? 2 times 4 is 8. And lo and behold, miracle of miracles, we have a cubed root of 3. So we have cubed root of 3 here, cubed root of 3 there. That means we're they're like terms and we can combine them. 45 cubed roots of 3 take away 8. Cubed roots of 3 is going to leave us with 37 cubed root 3. If they weren't like terms at this point, you would just stop there and you'd be done. All right, well, I hope that helps. And um, just keep in mind that when you're adding and subtracting radical expressions, it's a lot like uh, simplifying and combining like terms.